As a pastoral counselor and a pastor for nearly 40 years, I've had a lot of people that have gone through a lot of horrific things in their life, bad things happening, hard things, loss of life. Even myself, I've experienced some things that really make you wonder, why? And can something good come forth out of this? Well, in the heat of the battle, it probably doesn't seem that way. While you're going through the pain and the suffering, it's sometimes difficult to believe that something good can come out of this. No, it's, it's not a cliche. We, we, it's hard to take the cliche. Especially when we're in such pain sometimes or such confusion or disruption. Very difficult because when we begin to go through pain, things narrow in. Our focus, our attention, our emotions, everything starts looking at how do I get out of the pain or out of the uncomfortable situation? How can I, how can I figure out what I should do now? when everything seems overwhelmingly hard. I mean, when our business took a hit, we were wondering what were we gonna do? There was no easy answer before us. I am grateful that the Lord has brought us through many things, and so that helped us to readjust our focus to say something good will come out of this. And, you know, you may not see it right away. That's not, uh, for us to say when it should happen but it will happen and I want to talk to you about that today that something good can come from bad hard or terrible circumstances and I'm not gonna and I don't want to minimize the pain your experience or the emotional upheaval or the uh, what seems to be the most hopeless situation at the moment because that would not be right. I believe we should address that and say that is hard. That is terrible. The scripture says weep with those who are weeping. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. You don't need any Job's friends to come along and beat you up while they're trying to help you. Sometimes we don't mean to be mean, but we're just come out being mean anyways, whether we meant to be or not. So as we start struggling through the process and we're looking at these hard things that have happened, the bad things that have happened, you know, terrible things that have happened, I don't want anybody to minimize the pain somebody's gone through or that they're in at the moment. But I want you to take for a second here with me for a little time to say, how can any good come out of this? God, I don't know how you're going to make this good. We often get mad at God because our faith is that God is God and God is all-powerful and he's a good God and why then is the bad things happening to good people? Why is bad things happening to bad people? The disciples asked, Jesus, a man that was all crippled up, was it the father's sin, the mother's sin, or the person's sin that caused this? Well, sometimes that's how we feel. The enemy's accusing us. We're accusing ourselves. What did I do to deserve this? Is this something that's generational? Or is this something that I've done? Or what? And Jesus said, none of the above. This is for God to be glorified. This is for our Father to shine forth with his glory and bring good to this person who had no hand either from his mother, father, himself causing the problem. So I want you to take that for a moment. If you've done something bad, you know you've done something bad, confess your sin, repent of it. Humble yourself to God. He is faithful and just to forgive you of any uh, sinfulness that you may have been involved with. And yes, there may be consequences going on in your life. 
Jesus told people after he would heal them or deliver them, go and sin no more, at least something worse comes upon you. And, and there's room for that, but that's yours and God, you know. As a pastor, I just put it out there to say, just check that box on the list while you're going through it. When I had my head injury, I went through a list of what I could have done or should have done. I couldn't find any good answers. You know, but God did take us through it and did bring about his miraculous intervention at some point. And the only thing that I learned out of all of that was at two or three confirmations, accept that. And don't ask for a fourth or a fifth because that's what really happened. And I won't go into that story today. But if you want to hear more about it, uh, just uh, email me at the information at lhope.org and I'll send you a little bit of something about it. But anyways, we do need to check out and see if it's us, but that's not always the case. But don't let the enemy drive you into the ground. Don't drive yourself into the ground because of what has happened. Yes, we do make mistakes sometimes. There are things we do that aren't always wise. There's accidents. There's a plethora of things that could bring about something bad, hard, or terrible in our life. So we can confess our own uh, coming short. I, I prayed to God about every th little thing that I could have ever thought of. And yet, it wasn't any of the above. Like I said, the end of it, what I did learn from it was at the mouth of two or three witnesses. Hold fast, don't give up. So can there be light? This is a question that uh, seems difficult because in the in the heaviness and the darkness and the turmoil and the emotional upheaval it seems so dark sometimes David said it, it's painful at night but hope comes in the morning but one of the things that I've noticed as a pastor and as a counselor many people will let the darkness rule over their tragic situation and it begins to take hold and define them as a person and where, where they're going to be for the rest of their life. And, and that's something that I want you to know that the present moment, the present circumstances, do not have to define you nor your future or where you're at today. See, when God first started working in creation, the, the first thing after the Spirit of God began to move was he spoke and said, let there be light. There's light in God's Word. There's light in the nature and the character, goodness, and love of God. So we need to uh, be willing to turn from the darkness, turn towards the light. And this is hard when we're going through depression, true depression, not a pity party. But if you're having a pity party, I'll join with you for a while because... Weep with those who are weeping. Rejoice with those that are rejoicing. But I want you to know that there can be light in, in the darkest of circumstances. That God's word can penetrate that and begin to break out the darkness that is clouding our minds and our, our hope and our faith. And so it's important to let the word of God dwell in you richly. Pull up the promises of God and look at them. And look at who He is. And align with Him and agree with Him that His word is true. Don't let the enemy keep you in doubt. Because that's the darkness that we all go through. I have found sometimes in some of the darkest, toughest circumstances... That the answer is walking in the midst with me. The Lord has taken us through many different trials and things in our life. I would at the time not want to go through it. If there be any other way, let this cup pass, Lord. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Later, after the Lord has brought us through, I would not give that experience up for anything but I certainly would not want to repeat it really I wouldn't 
But I wouldn't want it to be discounted. I wouldn't want it to be removed. Because in it, I found the Lord walking with me in this circumstance. And this is where people need to come back to the focus of humbling themselves, draw an eye onto God, and let Him carry us through these things when we can't do it ourselves. Can God turn things to good? I've heard people say, well, how's God going to turn this to good? Especially when they've lost a child or a spouse or a loved one. That's a tough. Uh, you know, I don't know how it's going to happen. But I have seen people that have asked those same questions later as they've been healed and they come through it be able to minister effectively and compassionately and powerfully for others who are going through what they went through. In a sense, something good came from that. But at a terrible cost. Jesus suffered tremendously. It was a horrific cost. But the good that came out of it for all of us so I like to look at the Bible as the references, one being Jesus. But of course, everybody tells me, well, that's Jesus, the Son of God, and he has special power. Well, we won't go down that road today. I want to look at Joseph. This, his life is a life of tragic circumstances. He's the youngest at the time. His mother was his father's beloved. Jacob was tricked into marrying Leah and then Rachel. And out of that, there's some things that happened. I'm not going to go into that, why I believe she did not have a child for the longest time. But it, it had to do with lying and idolatry, taking idols. And uh, anyways, so this is the son of his beloved, his first and only son of his beloved wife, Rachel. So, he's the favorite son. And a lot of times the youngest does get a lot more attention because by then, we as parents kind of too wore out to really rein them in like we did the others and we know that it's going to work out. Besides, there's others, older brothers and sisters usually to help out. But there was jealousy. The, the other brothers were jealous of him. And he had these wonderful dreams, and yet it seemed like uh, they're going to bow down to it. I mean, maybe he got kind of haughty and proud. Some people say maybe it was. I don't know. We don't have clarity on that. That would be speculation. And his father sends him out to check on his brothers one day, and they see him coming, and they decide to kill him. And they throw him into a pit. And they're thinking of ways to kill him. And one of his brothers intervenes and said, let's not have blood on our hands. Let's sell him into slavery. Let's make some money out of it. Sold into slavery. Oh, slavery is an evil. I don't see any justification for it. Why did this young man have to be sold into slavery? So he goes into the pit, the pit of despair, not sure what's going to happen, how it's going to happen. And then he's sold into slavery. And he begins to restart his life, and he is working hard, and he's doing everything right. And his new master promoting him, and his master's wife wants to have sexual relations with him. And he refuses to dishonor God and his master. And so she accuses him of rape falsely accused and he's thrown into prison he could have been killed that's that's what should have happened a slave attempting to rape a, a prominent figure the wife uh, would have been a death sentence but God intervened and it was only prison no prison he does such a good job being a good prisoner and helping out that he's promoted within there still. And then along comes Pharaoh's two servants and uh, they have dreams and Joseph tells them of the dreams and asks them, don't forget me. And when the dreams come to pass, just as Joseph uh, told them what their dreams meant, 
He was forgotten. Now, you and I, this is the prison of despair. This is a place where bitterness often will come into our heart. Now, perhaps he was still angry and bitter towards his brothers. I have no doubt I would be bitter and angry. I would, I'd really, you know, didn't want to forgive them. But there's a teaching that Jesus said, unless we forgive, we're going to stay in that prison until we pay the last penny. That's who. Eventually, though, Pharaoh has a dream, and his servant remembers Joseph was able to interpret dreams. And so Joseph brought out, and here's Joseph giving him the interpretation of the dream and a solution of what he should do. And now Joseph is second in command. The only person higher in the land was Pharaoh himself. Here's a, a boy who went from being the beloved son to being hated and, and uh, thrown into the pit, could have been killed, was sold into slavery, was falsely accused, went to prison, left and forgotten about. But God delivered him and set him in a high promotion, far higher than he would have imagined. Even being with his dad, but it had been as good. Well, when the famine came, just like the the interpretation of the dream and the wisdom that Joseph had about making sure they took the good years and stored up so they would have enough to get through the bad years. His brothers are there. They don't know it's him. He, he's playing a little bit of games with them, but nonetheless, let's get this moving a little quicker. His brothers were afraid that Joseph would repay the evil that they had given him. And he said, what you meant for evil, God meant and turned it to good. And it not only blessed Joseph, but saved those brothers, and the house of Jacob was saved and spared from the famine. Now, this lesson here of of moving through these transitions is, is something that we all need to take a look at. We're going to have good times and we're going to have some bad times. We're going to have things happen to us that we did not deserve to have happen. But if we'll trust God and we'll do it God's way and we look to God, God will bring us through it. We can look at from slaves to exaltation. It seems to happen. We just seen it in Joseph's case. Israel was taken captive. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are now slaves to Babylon. They stood for God, and God elevated them. Yes, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was tossed into the fiery furnace. Because they refused to bow and worship the king's statue. They were ready to die for their faith. Here it is. They've been taken from their homeland. They've been forced into a culture that's totally alien and evil to them. And they said this is as far as we're going. We're not going to do anything else. And God stood with them in the midst of didn't we not throw three men into the fire? But now I'm seeing four. And the fourth is like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar recognized God was with them in the midst of their situation. Brought them out. See, when, when the Son of God comes into our life, into our circumstances, no matter how evil the intention, no matter what impossibility is given to our circumstance, I am that I am, makes it possible. Daniel seen the same thing, and he had his trials and tribulations, and he was thrown into the lion's den, but again, exalted. Exalted. See, your circumstances 
do not have to define you. God's the one who has defined you. God has the one who's put the purpose for your life. Yes, there probably needed to be some things honed out in Joseph. There may have been things that needed to be dealt with with Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego. Israel sinned as a result. All of Israel suffered. And these four men suffered right along with it. It was not a great circumstance. But God was who they looked to. God is their portion. God is sovereign over their circumstances. And that's where we have to make our stand. God is sovereign over the circumstances and the situations. And we have seen people who have been born in poverty come out and become on top when it doesn't seem possible. And that's even for people who don't just serve God. It's when we do not let the circumstances dictate and rule, but we let who God made us to be take precedence and not let these other things become our focus. We have to trust in the one who's with us, who can turn all things to good. We have Jesus. What he's done on the cross is one thing, and that's for now and for eternity. He is our portion. He's our advocate. He's the one who stands with us. He's the one who calls forth the light into the darkness of our circumstances and our situations. It's because of who He is and His faithfulness that we can trust Him and Father and Holy Spirit to work in our life, to turn the circumstances and the situation to God's glory. See, you and I sometimes put ourselves in bad situations. And sometimes bad situations just come upon us that we had nothing to do about it, but we're caught up in it. You know, we didn't get to choose our parents. We didn't get to choose the color of our skin or our cultural background. Or we didn't get to choose much of anything. We were, we were placed here on this earth and God says, come out of darkness, come into light, reject the enemy, accept me. Here's my sacrifice for your sin. Jesus is my son, receive him. Let our covenant begin with him, and let's now move forward. And it's when we don't take and receive that, that we just tend to stay usually in the same bondages. And they can become generational, and they can become uh, setting our kids up and our grandkids up for future problems. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. It's by God that we have hope. It's God who brings us through all of the circumstances. It's God who can deliver and turn things to good. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. I had people quote this to me a lot when I was going through my head injury and all the pain and suffering. And I wanted to punch the next person that said that in the nose and said, you know, that works good. But uh, the Lord didn't allow that. Nobody said that after that. But it was true that God works things together for good. But here's something that you have to look at to them that love God. If you're still angry at God and you don't love God, well, you've got everything on hold and to them who are called according to his purpose not your own purpose his purpose are you there are we living for it thy kingdom come thy will be done are we living for our kingdom come and our will be done because as followers of Jesus Christ we're called to the purpose of the kingdom of God if you're not a believer, you haven't come out of darkness and accepted the call God has put, well, you're on your own. He, he has placed within you many things that can help you get out of it, but the only sure way that it's going to turn to good 
is for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. So redirect your purpose. What is your purpose? Lord, what is your purpose? And connect with him and the purpose he has in your life. Well, above all, take the shield of faith that you'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. There are going to be trials, fiery trials, and there's going to be circumstances, and, and God said to take up the whole armor of God, and above all, take up the shield of faith. Our faith is in Him, not in our faith, like some teach. No. Our faith is in who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is. Our faith is in the Word of God that has been written and established. Taking that kind of faith in who God is and that you are saved by faith in who Christ Jesus is and by grace. And God is the one who's going to take us through these fiery circumstances of our life. I wish we didn't have tr trials and tribulations, but they're part of making us strong. Diamonds are formed under great pressure. Strength comes from resistance and hard work and challenges. And so our lives are going to have these things. And yeah, there's times I wish I could intervene and stop it for people. But you know what? I want people to look to God and ask God, how do you want to take us through this? I know that all things work for good for your glory, for us. Help me love you and help me get aligned with your purpose, Lord. If you have prayer requests or have questions, I'd like you to get in touch with us. Uh, Sometimes our email server is a little slow. We're still trying to get enough uh, together to get a new one. But uh, they do get through. They're just sometimes slow. I just want to pray right now. Father, I ask that you will touch the hearts and the minds and the emotions of people. Lord, many are going through all kinds of upheaval because of the virus, the shutdown. There's a lot of fear because of the riots. Everything looks like there's no hope. We've got a lot of questions. Our circumstances, our situations, our loved ones, some have passed, some are uh, facing uh, health and hard situations. There's economic upheaval and work. There's so many things. And I'm just asking you, Lord, to shine in their life and their heart. May we have a conversation with you. May we get real with you and pray and call on the most high for help and whatever we need to create in our life whether it's repentance or we've had ignorance of your word or we've been in uh, rebellion or we just have lacked faith in who you are come and minister to each and every person that hears this message whether live or recorded Lord that you can take and bring forth good out of bad out of evil to you be the glory and the honor forever. Blessed be your name as you reach into life and change for your glory. We appreciate all donations that have helped us get some equipment and keep us going. And we just uh, don't want to spend a whole lot of time asking for it. Like everybody else, we need some economic. If you go to the elhope.org site and click on the online giving you'll be taken uh, to a page that looks like that and you can put in the amount and you can have it uh, with the notation that this is for everlasting hope or, or wherever you want to direct it in uh, the ministry we don't have a building fund right now we're not aiming for a building for the moment so we just want to thank you for joining us and we pray that God's word will encourage you and set any captivity free. Lord bless you and keep you safe.